Hi. <laughs> While I was a part of the team that formed San the city of San Diego Civic Innovation Lab, I worked on a project that taught me something about how DIY culture and open culture are creating new ways for us to think about relationships and actually creating new relationships. Uh, new relationships uh, among neighbors and citizens and communities and new relationships between people and our cities. I'm going to tell you about those changes and how they encourage us to think differently about things and also how they'll lead to uh, something that I call the read right city. As I'm talking, I want you to think about one question. And that question is, why are these people so happy? These are participants in the Open City Project. We launched the Open City Project uh, around asking a, a question. And that question was, what would you change to improve a problem in your community? So that question led to a collaborative process of people thinking, designing, and creating apps, devices, experiences, and hardware to uh, answer that problem, all working collaboratively. We've started the Open City Project on the National Day of Civic Hacking, which is a process that is led by a group called Code for America. And it was an appropriate start for us because uh, essentially what we asked people to make were hacks. And you can think of a hack as uh, a quick solution that can also be implemented quickly and tested quickly. It might not be the exact fit as a solution to the problem, but hacking is a practice that gets us to the pathway towards an exact fit. Here are some of the hacks that our Open City project teams came up with. Uh, this is from the City Dashboard team. Their aim was to create uh, and aggregate in one place all of the different information and data streams, real-time information that would be useful to San Diegans. So to put those all in one place, either in an app or in an actual public display somewhere in a neighborhood. This is some work by the Citizen Intelligente team. Their objective, well, what they created is a device, a citizen science device, that has uh, a bunch of tiny environmental sensors on it. And they wanted to put that device into the hands of every resident in Barrio Logan. So that those residents that could have agency in the ongoing debate and conversation about the environmental risk uh, problems in their neighborhood. So uh, I'm going to show you now a couple of DIY interventions, urban interventions, that came from places outside San Diego. The one on top is from uh, Los Angeles. And what you might not be able to tell is that these are signposts, right? These are the city signposts. So what this does is it turns any collection of street signs into a gathering place by simply placing a piece of wood onto the bar and turning it into a seat. Uh, down at the bottom is an intervention from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, and uh, if you can't read that sign, what that sign does is it creates a skip-only zone on the street. So <laughs> a way of changing the way that people interact uh, with the folks as they walk on the street and how they think about maybe their walking commute to work. This is one from San Francisco, uh, and it actually came out of a process that was uh, very similar to the process that we did for the Open City Project. It was led by a guy named Jake Levitis, and uh, this project uh, is a very simple to construct stage that can be constructed to turn any space into an instant performance space. So you could take this and construct it and put it in an alleyway, 
put it at the end of a block, put it in a park, um, <clears throat> pretty much uh, even an abandoned lot, and turn that place into a performance space. Now, I, I talked to Jake Levitis a lot because he was installed as uh, a fellow in the innovation office in San Francisco while I was a part of the Civic Innovation Lab here in San Diego. And also because he and I were interested in uh, finding ways to put out on the streets the same kind of civic engagement opportunities. So uh, one of the things that Jake and I agreed on is that if this practice we were involved in was really going to be uh, a part of open culture, then it needed to do the best things that open culture does. And for us, that was uh, provide an opportunity for someone to take an innovation that someone else made, an innovation from somewhere else, and bring it into a new context and make revisions to it, um, and in other words, remix it, so that it fits that new context. So take an innovation from somewhere else, remix it, and make it work in your new place. And with the Open City Project, we succeeded in doing that, right? So it worked. This is what we thought was the best thing could come out of these engagements that we were interested in. This came from our uh, portable parklet team. And you can tell some of the similarities between it and the stage that we saw before, right? It's based on that but remixed, and one of the key elements in the remix, uh, if you can tell, these little round pieces that, collect the, that connect the wooden slats, those are this ingenious uh, contraption that Eric Lutala, who from the New School of Architecture came up with, that actually let you configure these slats in almost any kind of position that you want, right? You can get a full, uh, I think, 180 degrees of tilt uh, by rotating these hinges, and it allows you to create um, a performance space, but also maybe a table for doing uh, information or uh, restaurant seating or just a chill out space and pretty much anything else that you want. And that was important because that met a specific need in San Diego for communities and agencies who don't have time to really design stuff, but they want to you know, be a part of this process of uh, taking a space and activating it, taking an otherwise unused space and activating it. And so we've put this now, it's actually the Downtown San Diego Partnership holds on to this, and anyone who wants to use it, one of those groups, can. They can go and they can configure it how they need to activate a new space. So it worked, our process worked. Is that why these people are so happy? The answer is no. <laughs> Uh, because, yes, uh, projects were successful, but there were also a lot of projects that, uh, even, our, even on the day of our celebration, were still notional, right? Uh, so it, it wasn't about that, um, although these people were still backflip happy, and uh, even now, you know, months later, they're still happy and engaged with the ideas that they were exploring in our project. And I know that because I run, up, run into them on the street and they tell me so. Um, but it was a different kind of civic engagement, right? Uh, I've been a part of a lot of civic engagements, uh, and whether they're rallies or marches or uh, they end up being in rooms like this one, uh, City Council Hall, they all have shared this, this aspect of being anchored around some sort of bureaucratic process that usually was represented by a long document written in convoluted language, right? And that's what you see happening here. I want you to take a look at the guys in the front row. I might describe their expression as glum, right? I don't know how you would uh, describe it, but uh, let me add this fact to it. They're actually winning. This is their winning face because <laughs> Uh, they're going to get what they want out of this meeting. Um, and I say, however you describe it, uh, they are definitely more subdued uh, in their reaction than our Open City team was. And I'm going to explain to you why. Please put your arm up if you recognize what uh, these let this letter and dash combination means. Uh, Oh, two, okay, I see like four arms. Keep your arms up for a minute. Everyone else, look around. These are the geeks in the audience. 
and thank you guys for self-identifying yourselves. This, uh, what I'm showing you is actually part of a, of a very important metaphor, a very strong metaphor that I want to share with everyone. So I am going to de-geekify it um, so that we all can be fortified in our thinking about this point by, by using this metaphor. Uh, what this is, is this is what a computer will give back to you if you ask it, what kinds of permissions do I have, right? What's the permission that I have to use this file? The one that's just an R, uh, the computer is telling you that that is a read-only file. That means you can uh, look at it and close it. That's really it. You can look at it and close it. That's all you can do with a read-only file. A read-write file, right, that's what the RW tells you, it's a read-write file, is a file that you can open, you can look at, you can edit, you can make changes and save those changes and then save those and then share those changes with someone else, right? Um, and then hopefully that person has the same sort of permit permissions and they can do the same. A read-write file is like a home that you own. A read-only file is a place that you're just visiting, right? You're just a guest in it. Um, so, <laughs> the, on, on, on the, the left-hand side, you have what happens, right? This is what engagement looks like in a read-only city. On the right-hand side, you have what engagement looks like in a read-write city. Now, one of the things that's happening here in this read-only city is uh, these glum guys have been there forever, right? And I don't mean just that day. It's been a long day. I mean, it's a process that takes a long time. You have to go in the middle of your work day, and uh, you sort of have to deal with these attitudes of that you don't really belong here anyway, right? Um, so that's why they're so glum. And on the other side, why these people look like they're on the verge of doing a backflip uh, is because they know that this is a process that is really for them, right? This is what it's about. On the other, on the other side, the glum guys, it's like when they came in through the back door, someone told them, hey, you can look at this show, but don't enjoy it, it's not really for you. On the other side, these guys know it's their show, they own it. Now, a couple of things had to happen in, our, in this cultural moment to permit a read-write city being possible. One of them was the proliferation of places that folks can go uh, to have access to fabrication tools so they can actually make stuff, right? We could not have done our project without the existence of the uh, Fab Lab here in San Diego. Another is the spreading of these ideas like the value of hacking for good, which Code for America has done a great job at uh, sharing throughout our country. And another thing is the fact that uh, DIY culture and maker culture are dominating our, our airwaves and dominating uh, our, our regular culture, mainstream culture, which I think is great, solid. Glad that makers and uh, DIYers have finally got their due. Uh, but what that means is that people are now seeing these examples, right? And this is how it plays out. Someone sees uh, that there's been a 3D printed kidney, and they say, they just 3D printed a, ki they just 3D printed a kidney. They just 3D printed a damn kidney. And now they're going to put it inside someone, and it's going to work like a kidney. That's crazy. Well, if they can 3D print a kidney, I think I can probably make a park bench. I've never made a park bench, but in a world where it's possible to 3D print a kidney, I feel pretty good about the odds of my park bench being successful. So it's, it's a lower bar, right? It's a low bar, it's fast, it's accessible, and it's something that people feel they can jump aboard on. Um, the read-only city is none of those things, right? And that's why these people are, are looking like, like they do. Although they really believe in what they're doing, um, the hurdle that they had to get over is just a little too high for most of us, right? All that time and that taking off from work and coming back and back and going on for maybe a year. On the other hand, um, these guys, we started the, the Open City project on June 1st and we had actual 
prototypes and a celebration all installed on June 29th, right? The bar for entry is low and people are, are jumping on um, and being, as I said, uh, backflip happy, as you can see. So I hope you agree with me now and that you've come to the same conclusion that the answer to the question of the day, why are these people so happy, is because they are finally getting to engage with their city the way that they've wanted to, right? They've always wanted to go out and be active citizens, but they never found the right vehicle until now. The open city is a read-write city, and a read-write city is a city that is yours. I believe that read-write cities are the preamble to a read-write world. And I believe that when the read-write world arrives, all of us are going to be backflip happy. <laughs>